Hello, and welcome to Music Without Borders, the show that broadens your musical horizons. I'm Scott Lassenbrook, and I'll be your host of Musical Emancipation. On today's episode, 10 music acts you might not know. Music has the ability to captivate and motivate, to inspire and instigate, to unlock deep feelings within our hearts and souls, and enrich our spirits forevermore. But with Spotify algorithms, the Billboard Top 40, and strict international copyright laws, it's difficult to see past the rather tall borders set up for us in the world music community. Well, we here at Music Without Borders act as a high-powered drone, and we scale those restrictive boundaries and take your ears on a journey to places anew. We have compiled 10 exotic music acts from literally everywhere in order to spread the seeds of musical discovery in foreign soil, shattering the metaphorical borders of life that cage us along the way and enriching our lives in a cultural way. We hope you enjoy. Oh, and don't forget to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button and hit the bell too. We've got to keep our own borders down somehow. Okay, here we go. Our first stop in our magical tour of sound takes us to Japan, the land of the rising sun and home to its own rich and storied musical culture that's admired the world over. Though today's Japanese music is known mainly by its mainstream outputs, both domestically and internationally, especially thanks to idol culture. However, some real talented musicians and their unique stories are waiting to be discovered underneath the surface of mainstream popularity. Take our first act, for instance, Kiyoura Natsumi. She used to do anime songs for popular shows like Spice and Wolf and Sgt. Frog, among others, and played bit parts in a couple of movies, while being an underwear model, who released an album when she was 19, became a DJ for a popular radio station that literally closed a month ago, it's so sad, I just found out about it just yesterday, and then teamed up with bassist Oki Reiji to form a jazzy pop rock group called the Tweeties! Though her career has taken many changes over the last decade, Kiyoura's voice works incredibly well in this setting, profiling the band as a versatile, energetic act. They just released their third album and are touring the country and are enjoying modest domestic success, but now you know about them, and now you know who they are, so that's one border shattered. I'm a fan of gangster rap, and I don't mean that yo, 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 what's up, my dude, you got five on it, or whatever kind of meaning, but in that, I truly admire and respect it as a genre. Gangster rap, not for only being cool music to listen to, also comes from a place of creative honesty, a sort of musical integrity that really makes it feel like it came from a place of truth within the song. Most of the hits came from a time before capitalism saturated the market and diluted the artfulness and meaning behind the music. We all know the greats and the recognizable names, N.W.A., Big E, Tupac, A Tribe Called Quest, Cypress Hill, Scarface, Snoop Dogg, Warren G, Public Enemy, Busta Rhymes, Ice-T, Ghostface Killer, Coolio, the Voice to Men, etc. But have you ever heard of a guy named Yi? G is a rapper from Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia, and he lived in the Gur district, one of the slums of the city. Think of it like a Mongolian Compton, but probably even worse off. Though his persona, and the Mongolian hip-hop scene in general, is violent and arrogant, his music is actually much smarter than first glance. His raps often include politics of his past, of moments of wisdom and advice, and as well as the usual Mongolian pride. Trademark. Whether you want to call this much pride for one's country a form of nationalism or not, one thing he definitely hates, probably as a result of his pride as a Mongol, is that he is rather anti-communist. And to keep things as neutral as possible, there so happens to be a big country chock full of communism right next door, and that country hasn't been on the friendliest terms with Mongolia, historically speaking, like ever. That's a fairly deep rabbit hole to jump into, but now you know about Guy, thanks to us shattering the borders of race and ideologies with the power of music.
You know, I may be misleading some of you. I may be putting up borders of my own. So far, this list has shown off two incredibly talented musicians that make wonderful, pleasing music. I am not expecting you to think that in order to have music worthy of shattering borders, you must be a talented musician. No. In fact, you don't even need to be a musician to be a musician. You can just break the borders of talent and make music anyway. This is Noisecore. Picture this. Your dad just bought you a $400 guitar, and your rich stepdad got you a $3,000 drum set and recording equipment. And while mom pays to soundproof the house, there's no room for lessons. That didn't stop our next act, the band Scab Addict, from making noise for a little too many albums worth. That's a long way to go for an ironic statement. It's not delusions of grandeur if you're intentionally making terrible music. And that makes them the best. Check out their Facebook, I probably won't. At least it's border shattering, to say the least. Our Earth is just one simple Earth. But to consider the true vastness of space, you'll find the scope of our measly planet is nothing compared to the true depths that the universe can reach. How much music are we really missing out on? Can we break the furthest of geographical borders? Maybe we can. Trillions of light years away, in a seldom seen corner of the universe, in a solar system just about to discover the faint hums of an approaching Voyager 1, is the planet Melogagdan, home to the currently dominant Mustenkiana people. There they make Fedsed music, with a special Fedseg flute, which they call a Morkgronga, gas that expels from tiny polyps in the throat within the Mustakianian performer, called a Krogagagram, while the Morkkongra is used, and with special Krogagagram training, the gas can be controlled and pitched, which allows dissonant harmonies to play in tandem with one another. Fed Zed Music is Mino Gagden's number one export, with their top hit being the newly released Grampan Horosig by Nikol de Mintororian. I hope our music doesn't confuse them. They must think our culture strange. We've broken so many borders already, and we've already expanded our musical horizons that much more. However, some of you may not be feeling totally on board with our journey yet. Perhaps our breakneck pace and border shattering has been a little too much for you all. Let's all fall back on a music act familiar to us. Ah, Rihanna. World-renowned pop star. Her beauty, voice, and versatility as an artist have made her an absolute icon. Such a well-known celebrity, what borders can we possibly break from here? Well... Using Rihanna as an anchor, let us break the borders of time itself. Thanks to our border-breaking materials and methods of flux capacitation, we have a way to see music from far into the future. This is Sweet To You, Bitter To Booty, Rihanna's top hit from the year 2033. Though the song seems to have been fully composed yes. by an love AI, like and is sung by another AI, yes. and in fact most and of the album itself really was fully automated like most things in the music bad. industry in 2033, but you know, whatever, right? At least Rihanna's still on the album no cover, bad. and she looks good still. When I sweet to you, love to the booty. Yes, sweet to you, love to the booty. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. You know, it's not always geographical borders or the borders of space-time that divide our musical interest. It can also be music itself. This is John Cage's 4 minutes 33 seconds, a song which has no actual notes in- Huh? I already used this one last year? Oh, well, moving on. No need to smash the border of redundancy. You know, it's not always geographical borders or the borders of space-time that divide our musical interests. It can also be the music itself. We've seen musicians from all over time and all over creation, but what if we were to remove the musician itself? What if we were to extract music in its raw, natural form? If we remove all of the superficial nonsense from the equation, the musician, the instruments, the producers, the audience, if we just strip away everything and leave just the basic component of music, what then are we left with? A square tone. Genius. Infantile in its simplicity. 
unlimited in its potential in which to shape and mend. It is not yet music due to its monotonous pitch and sustained longevity, but to call it a tone suggests its musical inevitability. But to alter it or to shape it tarnishes its purity as a perfect square tone. To cut it off, give it shape, and to give it a name no longer makes it a square tone, but its own individual song, trapping it within the confines of another identity given by its human master. Ah, just listen. Here, it stays as an untapped square tone. Like a running faucet ready to fill the glass of a thirsty composer, its ample reservoir of music waiting to be harnessed. May its infinite possibility wash over you as we break through the border of melody. Who said music had to be music? Why does music have to be so organized? I kind of like the noise core after all, it's kind of growing on me. Why can't we just let music succumb to chaos? Well, such chaos would barely be considered music. It is the order in the chaos that brings life to music, and reckless abandon cannot break any borders. But in order to shatter the boundaries of music itself, we have to go to something not quite music in nature. I just inserted a Dreamcast disc inside of a CD player, and now audible data is being played. Though the data is set up in a fixed pattern, a deliberate code for the perfect set of eyes to scan and decode, putting the same data through another pair of eyes set to look for data a different way will come up with something unrecognizable. Yet, the set of eyes that looks upon this data now are eyes that were only meant to see music. We hear it with ears that reject it as formless noise, but our minds and our ears can recognize it as music. If we were to give this mess of garbage noise a name, then it is given tune, and its classification as a song is attached to it. Thus noise becomes music, and the confines of music are ruptured, and its border level. We've come this far. All of the borders have been shattered, but there's just one more left to cross. It has been one constant theme that connects all of these different types of music, something that links them all together. And I know the key. I know the way to shatter the realities of the universe. We need to break the border of audible sound. How can there be music if there is no sound to compress it, to make it heard? Our next act is... On Newgrounds, there is a defunct music artist by the name of Jester667. He did video game remixes, that is, cheap slapdash rush jobs of just throwing together VST instruments over MIDI tracks of famous video games and calling that a remix. After not immediately being called out as a fraud and not being attacked by hackers, he continued this method. He covered many games and many genres, including a few original works and enjoyed minuscule success making 70 songs over his career. He had worked mainly from 2006 to 2009 until he grew bored of the concept of cheap, fast remixes and went on to other life interests. Some say he still visits the old Newgrounds site for old time's sake, and wherever he is now, at least he's not crafting overly elaborate joke videos that take way more effort than needed and making Let's Play videos for the internet. April Fools! Thank you. 